I have found the most amazing way to automate my Linux setup so I can use my setup on any computer at any time. And it's super easy. Check this out. All I have to do is run one simple command and that's it. This one command just installed every single package that I would want on my system. It installed all of my settings and everything is just perfectly set up to how I like it. But wait, how does this work? What's the magic here? Well, it's shell scripts. That's it. So stick around and I'll show you how to do it. It's super easy. Let's go. So here's a quick story. You might have noticed recently that I've been on Ubuntu as opposed to Arch as my Linux distribution of choice. And you see what happened was is I broke my Arch install again and I got mad and installed Ubuntu. But now I'm ready to go back to Arch. I miss Arch, I miss the AUR. It's a great ecosystem and I love it. That's right, I'm ready to have my heart broken again. But here's the thing, while I was on Ubuntu, I crafted a really nice setup for my Linux environment that I truly enjoyed. I love GNOME, so I had GNOME set up to my liking exactly the way I liked it, and it was working perfectly for me. So now when I go back to Arch, I don't wanna lose all of the stuff that I had installed on my previous system in Ubuntu with GNOME and everything else. In fact, I made a whole entire video on this GNOME setup because I liked it so, so much. So how do I go from Ubuntu to Arch Arch while not missing any of my configurations from Ubuntu. And now some of you might be thinking to yourselves, well, NixOS solves this, doesn't it? But here's the thing, you see, I have kids and NixOS is, it's just a bit much. Can we say that? Can I say that now? NixOS is just, it just seemed like it was a bit much. I looked into it for a while. I really tried, but there was just too much going on with Nix. I wanted to go back to something that I knew well. So I still wanted to have a reproducible Linux setup. And in order to do that, I wrote shell scripts. When it comes to system commands, it's really easy to take what you would write in a shell and just make it into a file and execute it. Here, let me show you what I mean. Let's say I want to install a program. Let's say that program is, I don't know, Btop. Right now, I'm I'm on Arch and I use yay as my Pac-Man helper. And if I want to install Btop, I type yay-s Btop. That's pretty straightforward, right? Now, if I want to do this in a slightly more automated way, I could type yay-s and then pass the no confirm flag to yay and then type Btop. And now what this does is it'll install Btop without asking me whether or not I want to install Btop. Yay always does this. But I don't have just one package at a time on my system, I have a bunch. How do I manage a lot of different packages? Well, in shell, you can declare arrays pretty simply, right? So let's just say I want to declare an array called packages. I can type the variable name, the equal sign, and an open parenthesis. Then on the next lines, I can type some of the packages I want to install. Let's just say I want Btop, Htop, Yazi, because Yazi is awesome. And let's just say those are the packages I want to install. There we go. Now, if I want to install all of these programs, all I have to do is write a for loop in bash, something like for package in, and then I type packages with an open and closed bracket and an at symbol. That's how you denote an array in shell. I type do, and then I can type yay, dash s dash dash no confirm and then the variable package then i type done and then there we go now we are installing all of the packages i just listed in the packages array super simple to do but here's the thing you can do a lot more of these commands than just run them in the shell you can actually put this into a file and execute it so let's create a little shell script to show how this would work i can open up a new file called install-packages.sh in the top here i type shebang to do bin bash this tells bash that this is a bash file and it can run it in the bash shell and this would basically imitate what we just did in the shell itself, but it's put into a file here that we can execute whenever we want. So just like before, we can create a list of packages, open and close the parentheses, and then inside of packages, we can type the things that we want, like htop, btop, yazi, yay, 
anything, any package in the world that you could want on your system. Now, if you're watching this video, you might've noticed that I opened up Vim to edit the files that I'm currently working on. I love Vim. I think it unlocks a massive amount of productivity for me as a developer. And I'm super excited to announce that we now have Vim learning stuff on typecraft.dev. Check it out. We have Vim challenges. If you want to go head to head and test your Vim skills against anyone else in our community, we already have well over 500 submissions on our very first challenge and we're just getting started not to mention we also now have vim mini courses if you're trying to level up your vim knowledge go into our vim mini courses and check them out they are amazing we're actually using ai to help you learn through vim mini courses as well as the vim challenges sign up now at typecraft.dev we are adding to this every single day we're adding more and more features more and more lessons and it's only getting better and better check it out and then we can type a for loop for package in packages with the at symbol, which will denote that this is an array that it wants to loop through, we type do, and then we type yay dash s dash no confirm the package variable. And there we go. Now we are done. Now this is a file that will run the exact commands that we just made before. If we write and quit this file, then we can run chmod for this file, passing the x flag to make this executable. And we type the name of the file in there, install packages.sh. And then there we go. Now we have a file that will run and install all of those packages that we just laid out and it works perfectly. It's super simple to do, but you can extend this kind of functionality to any Linux distribution you might be using. If you're using uh, Debian, then you would use apt. You can use any of the package managers they would use for uh, Red Hat, for Fedora, for Gentoo, whatever it is. You can do this exact same thing in shell scripts. You don't need Nix OS and all of the complexities around the language, the operating system, and the configuration system that is Nix OS. All you have to do is write a bunch of shell scripts. And that is what I did here. I'm calling this crucible. And whenever I run crucible, I have a script here called run.sh. Again, this is just a shell script like we showed before, but it just parses things out in different ways. We have a bunch of different scripts that we sort of combine together here to install my whole entire system and make all the configurations the exact way I want to. Let's do a quick tour of how I did this. So to start with, we are sourcing our utils function and our utils functionality comes from the utils file. And this just gives us a couple of functions that we would use throughout all of our shell scripts, like checking if something is already installed, checking if a certain group is already installed, if we want to install something like GDM. And we also have a function called install packages, which is kind of the thing that I showed you earlier. It just makes sure that we install the package correctly and gives us a nice, easy to use API for installing packages. Next, what we do is we source our packages.conf file. This will bring in all of the packages that I want on my system. This is just a much larger version version of what we just wrote together in a simple bash script. I have all of my system utils, my dev tools, my maintenance, my desktop, which is GNOME and GNOME tweaks, and also everything else I would use like VLC, Flameshot for doing screenshots and things like that, and all my fonts, my services, and everything else. Next, if I go back to run.sh, after we source all of our packages, we update our whole entire system. And this is something that you want to do with Arch pretty regularly. So I should run this script often to make sure that my system system's always up to date. I don't have a partial upgrade and I don't break my system. Then I have just a little bit of code here to make sure I have the yay AUR helper because I like using yay. It allows me to download either AUR packages or actual packages in the Arch Linux repo itself. And it sort of blends them together to be one thing. I don't have to clone a Git repository, run a make file, make sure my dependencies are installed and then install a project. It's just gonna be there for me with an AUR helper like yay. So I always make sure to have yay installed. And then once yay is installed, I just call install install packages and I pass the array of the packages that I'm installing. And you can see right here, system utils, dev tools, maintenance, and everything else. And that's basically the whole entire system. This is an idempotent way to define all the packages you want on your system and run this whenever you want. Now for me, I made this for Arch Linux and for GNOME because that is the system that I like to use, but this could be extended to anything, literally anything. You like using KDE? Do you like using a terminal window manager? Do you like using a tiling window manager like Hyperland or i3 or Awesome WM or any of those great tiling window managers? All you have to do is install that package by modifying your packages list and that's it. 
This is a super easy way to have your whole entire system at your fingertips whenever you want it. So this is my Linux crafting tool where I can automate my Linux installation anywhere I want. And as I showed you, it's a really simple concept. You just make shell scripts to do the things that you want and then you run them. If you want to check out more, it's in the Typecraft Dev GitHub repository called Crucible. Check this out. It's really cool. I'm using it all the time and I'm super excited about it. Be sure to subscribe for more Linux, Vim, and all kinds of cool content. And hey, thanks nerds.